So thank you, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much again for this uh, very kind invitation. It is, um, it is always a pleasure to come to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy and to have the opportunity to, to address this audience. Um, I, I think that I am uh, going to, uh, to skip a little bit of uh, what I was, uh, I had planned. I will show you nevertheless the slides that I have and I will comment on them. But I would like also to give you some uh, uh, food for thought and some hints about uh, ma main uh, issues that um, uh, are now uh, very much in the forefront of our uh, preoccupations, not only as Europeans, not only for Portugal as a Western European uh, nation, uh, but also, I would say, for all of us in a, a global more and more complicated and complex international context. Uh, and when it comes to a place like the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, I would say that a lot of the challenges that we are faced with are also cultural uh, challenges in the, in the real sense uh, uh, of the word. Let me start by uh, uh, telling you that uh, uh, one of my professional experiences before becoming ambassador to Germany was uh, when I was ambassador in Algeria, in Algiers. Um, uh, during the Portuguese presidency of the European Union, I was dealing with the Middle East peace process on behalf of the Portuguese presidency of the European Union. And so I traveled extensively in the Middle East. I was based essentially in Beirut and Damascus at that time, and I was visiting many of those uh, uh, places in the Middle East. If you compare uh, the situation in the Middle East then, and the Portuguese presidency was back in 2007, with the situation that we are faced with in that region, we can obviously say, without any margin for error, that the situation did not improve that the security situation did not uh, uh, come for a betterment, and that the challenges, the cultural challenges, are even bigger, even greater, even more uh, daunting uh, than they were at that point in time. And that brings me to, uh, back to the European preoccupations and to what I would like to show you about Portugal, uh, in the context of a forum that is devoted to, uh, to economy. But again, uh, if you think about uh, how things could change for the worse, uh, how you can ever take for granted a, a particular international situation and context, it is only sufficient to think about the situation in the Middle East back in 2007, where the main preoccupation was obviously the Israel-Palestinian conflict. And a lot of people, we were even today discussing that at our embassy, a lot of people would uh, tell you that if you would be able to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you would hold the key for peace and stability in the Middle East. Today, everybody would agree that uh, the biggest of the problems in the Middle East is, not, is no longer the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And even if you would be able uh, to solve uh, by a passive magic the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you would not be able to solve the problems of the Middle East because they are much wider, much more complex, much more culturally linked and rooted. So you never should take for granted a specific international situation. And that applies to Europe. Europe is an unfinished endeavor, an unfinished business. And all of the political scientists and analysts that would think uh, that could have thought some uh, five, ten years ago that Europe would be a very stable, a place for decades to come, 
they are obviously uh, proven wrong. We are faced with uh, <coughs> a lot of challenges in Europe. Uh, they are, of course, of a very different scale from the ones that I just mentioned, uh, referring to the Middle East, obviously. But nevertheless, the sense that it is a daily task, a very hard, challenging daily task to do whatever it is in our power, in our capability to foster uh, European uh, destiny, European dream, European stability, and try to fulfill the promises of the uh, European uh, uh, project founding fathers. Uh, how Portugal contributed during these times of crisis uh, to the betterment of the European Union dream. I think that what we did, uh, adjusting and uh, creating the conditions for our economy to recover, is a very good example of our contribution, of our very serious contribution for the future of Europe. And I will, on the second part of my presentation, highlight a very interesting dimension of our economic recovery, that is, it, I picked up one sector and I thought that uh, for a mostly uh, young audience, as it is usually the case in the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, I would choose tourism. And you will see why. And I am not going to talk about tourism in the more traditional, traditional way. But let me uh, tell you a couple of things about what we did why we are very proud about with what we did, and why we believe that uh, what we did contributes decisively to the future uh, of the European Union. I will tell you if I will know how to manage this. Uh, okay. So if, if you look uh, because talking about Portuguese adjustment is probably very easy to do that in a very theoretical way. Um, and we could say that we did, we fulfilled all the obligations we had, we took with the international financial institutions. <coughs> and <coughs> the, the fiscal consolidation is a very important aspect. Uh, very often called wrongly austerity, fiscal, fiscal consolidation is totally indispensable if you want to build a sounder economy for the future generations. And we did it. We did it in the way I'm not going, you, you can read it very easily, I'm not going to dwell in detail uh, on the figures that we have in front of us. <coughs> but if you would ask me what was the secret of uh, the Portuguese society and the Portuguese government achieving very tough, very exigent, very difficult goals, I would tell you in a sentence that the big difference with others is that we took the process of adjustment as our own process. There was, from the very beginning, a very important sense of ownership. This was no longer a reform process, a co fiscal consolidation process imposed on us by the international financial institutions. It was the Portuguese program that led us really to fulfill our international obligations. Um, it, is, it is very important to, to see the figures. Uh, the primary balance, um, um, if you look at where we were in 2010 and uh, what are the projections for 2015, that tells you uh, a lot about uh, the Portuguese recovery in a very sound uh, structural uh, way. One of the most uh, uh, interesting aspects of the Portuguese adjustment and economic recovery was a much better than expected external adjustment. Uh, as I say in that uh, slide, very telling, Portugal moved from an external deficit to a surplus already in 2013. And you know that our program of adjustment started in 2011, so already in 2013, we were showing a surplus uh, of 2.3 uh, percentage of the GDP in our external deficit. And in the first semester of 2014, 
Portugal maintained a balanced external account, leaving, as we can see, very good perspectives for the way ahead. This uh, is also, again, uh, a very important slide because that gives you a flavor about the favorable macroeconomic scenario. I am referring to the figures of 2014 because obviously those are the latest figures available. We uh, have not yet figures for 2015. Um, a real growth rate of 0.9%. Uh, it, it is important that you realize that the three European Union member nations that performed serious reforms, Ireland, Portugal, and Spain, are now those that are showing the better figures in terms of macroeconomic uh, uh, recovery. So the real growth rate of those three countries, Ireland, Spain, and Portugal, are better than anywhere else in Europe. Um, and, of course, the prospects for the figures to go on growing uh, uh, in a steadfast way are obviously uh, being consolidated by the day. Unemployment uh, uh, fell substantially. Let me uh, say a sentence on unemployment. That is also a very important issue, especially when it, when, when it comes to youth unemployment. You know that we have and uh, at the peak of the crisis, figures of unemployment in Portugal very close to 20%. Average figures of 20% of unemployment are not as high as the figures in Spain or in Greece, because as you know, the figures in Greece are still 25%. In Spain, they are still around the 20% uh, figure. For Portugal, figures of that dimension, figures of that size, were a, a huge, tragic uh, uh, novelty because we never had in our society such high levels of unemployment. So Portugal, unlike Spain, unlike Greece, never had figures of uh, uh, almost 20% uh, average unemployment. Uh, so it was a totally new social drama and the phenomenon for our society. What is interesting is that so soon after exiting the program of adjustment, and we did it, as you know, in May 2014, in a so-called exit, a clean exit way, without any precautionary program, when without any further bailout, not asking for more money, not asking for more time, so closing the chapter of our financial obligations with the international financial institutions, uh, 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 what nobody was expecting was that the figures of unemployment would start decreasing so soon, so rapidly, so quickly after the end of the program. And now they are 13.3 numbers, figures of January 2015, and we all know uh, the economists in, uh, in the room know that January is always, in the European uh, societies, the worst possible uh, figures uh, for uh, unemployment, for many reasons doing related to seasonal uh, employment. Those uh, figures, especially when they relate to January, are extremely significant. Of course, to be honest with you, I should tell you that these figures of unemployment, they are only part of the sad story of unemployment in the crisis hit European Union countries. Because the real problem is the youth unemployment. Especially in countries like Portugal, but also in countries like Greece or Spain, when this current generation is the best prepared ever generation. And this is the generation that is feeling the burden of huge numbers of unemployment and the youth unemployment in Portugal is almost 30%. So that is a big problem, a big challenge that we are faced with, that we need to tackle. There are many ways to do it, and one of the keys to fight youth unemployment is to adopt and adapt 
to the Portuguese reality the so-called German dual system of education. So professional training, the dual system, is one of the opportunities, one of the keys to fight youth unemployment. So you can see, if you look at the real GDP figures coming from uh, minus 3.3 in 2012 to a projection of uh, uh, well above 1% growth and uh, coming back to figures very close to 2% growth, uh, this is again an extremely important uh, dimension of our, of our recovery. And, and the growth cycle based on private consumption, on investments and on exports. And when it comes to exports, let me show you that uh, Portugal in 2009 had only 28% 20 of its G GDP based on exports. It is, it is the first uh, 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 figure in this uh, slide. And now we are well above 40%. So the Portuguese exports represent uh, about what, for our economy, about what German exports represent for the German economy. Goods and, uh, and, uh, and uh, services, of course, but also what is extremely interesting to notice is the diversification. There is a lot of exports going to extra European Union, to non-European Union markets, uh, increasing the share, the percentage share in total exports. And of course, as I say at the bottom of, um, of this slide, Portugal had the highest export growth within the European Union 15 since 2010 ahead of countries like Germany, France, Spain, and Italy. What are the, the sectors? Many sectors. I'm not going again to bother you with the different sectors, but tourism, of course, I will highlight uh, tourism, and I will come back to this slide before showing you uh, a, a beautiful thing at the end of my presentation before I conclude. But let me jump from the different sectors to, to show you the slide that I like the most, and that really encompasses the regained credibility, international credibility of my country, and that makes me extremely proud, because it is so difficult to come out of a crisis, but it is even more difficult to regain trust, to regain credibility. I always say when I talk in public that the most important commodity in any stock exchange is not uh, gold, is not uh, oil, is not uh, uh, uranium. The most, the most important, the most valuable commodity is trust. And I think that we really, we really did our bit in regaining trust. This is, of course, the uh, representation of the changes in the 10-year bond yields of the Portuguese treasury. And so, as you all know, 10-year bond yields are really the key indicator for market access of any, any uh, financial uh, uh, and economic uh, uh, situation. And if you look from where we were, from where we came, down to figures that are now, as we speak, below 2% the Portuguese Treasury bonds are be, the, the 10-year yields of the Portuguese Treasury bonds are below, below 2%. The, the slide, of course, is, is, is not up to date because the figures are coming down uh, again almost, uh, almost by the day. Let me come back to the, um, to the previous slide and to, again to highlight sectors. Uh, this is a very interesting thing, how the Portuguese economy is based on uh, uh, sectors like tourism, uh, creating revenues that uh, uh, are uh, extremely important in uh, absolute terms and also in relative terms uh, uh, in the context of our GDP, um, increasing, increasing quality, 
increasing figures, uh, consolidating and uh, fidelizing uh, uh, customers. Um, and, and again, it is important to reflect on the impact of this on the relation between Portugal and Germany and other countries, but in Germany in particular, as now we have uh, in uh, Germans the second uh, group of tourists that visit Portugal. So after the British, the Germans became recently the second most important uh, group of uh, nationals visiting Portugal, and there is an immense scope to uh, uh, still to increase. Um, again, uh, figures about uh, tourism. Um, it, is a, it is a beautiful sector, tourism, because it talks about uh, of a very beautiful country. So thank you very much. I am now at your disposal for any questions that you may, may have. Thank you very much.